Hello developers, my name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to add a login feature to your React Native applications. If you're not familiar with React Native, it offers a way to create mobile applications using React and JavaScript, which are probably tools you know and love. I wrote a blog post about this called Create a React Native Application with Login in 10 Minutes. So if you want to go through and see much more than what I'm talking about here, it's all available in this blog post and you'll notice there's a number of prerequisites. So I already have Node installed, I have Yarn installed, and you'll notice it also says Java 8. Well I actually have Java 12 installed and that'll work just fine. You also need an Okta developer account. So if you were to click sign up, you can see enter your email, first name, last name, company, and country, and then you'll get a free forever Okta developer account. It's good for up to a thousand monthly active users. And if you want to make it like 2,000 or 20,000, then it's just a little bit of cash. I have a GitHub repo that's associated with the blog post and a number of steps. So I've just taken the blog post and condensed it down into the bare minimum steps we'll need to do this. So I'm going to put that on the left here and we'll keep this on the right. And I already have React Native CLI installed. So you can see that by doing React Native version. And I'll start by creating a React Native application called React Native Login. Oh, wrong command. React native init react native login. So you can see that took about a minute to create. That can take different times based on your internet connection speed and your hardware. Okta has a React Native SDK, which is based on our libraries for OIDC with Android and OIDC with iOS. It uses authorization code flow with Pixie. So there's a one-time code that's exchanged and uh, it's the most secure way of doing OAuth on iOS and Android. I also created a OctaDev schematics project and this is uh, originally from Angular. They provide the schematics API but it allows you to manipulate basically any project that has a package.json and add files, manipulate files, things like that. So I'll be using that today. So first I'm going to start by installing schematic CLI. And then I'll create a native application on Okta. So I have an account at this URL. And if you click on applications, add application, you'll want to create a native application. And then I'll just call mine React Native and keep the defaults for the login redirect URI. Click done. And then you'll want to edit it and add the same URL for logout redirect. URI. Okay, so that's all set up. Let's add the schematic first. So we'll add it as a developer dependency. We'll cd into our React Native login project and install Octadev schematics. So I do recommend committing your project to git at this point. So I'm going to do git init and git add and git commit. Now you see we're on a clean tree, so I can run schematics, Okta dev schematics, and then add auth. And it'll prompt me for the issuer URL, which is available under API authorization servers. So you copy this, paste that in there, and then the application's client ID is right here. And this will do a number of things. It'll not only configure application to work with Okta and OIDC, but it'll also add some tests. So you see here we have an app test and an auth test that's been added. So if we were to do a git status, you can see we have a number of new files. App.js is modified, and we added an auth.js, an auth config, and a setup jest. And the reason for the jest setup is because schematics uses double underscore as a placeholder. 
and if you look at this project there's double underscore tests and so there's nothing in schematics that I could do to actually get it to replace that directory so I just created a new one and then I configured jest to point to that new directory so if we were to do a git diff you can see what it's adding it's adding off to that app.js it's adding a new section that says basically login with Okta and then it manipulates the build.gradle to have the auth redirect scheme. It changes the platform for iOS to be 11. It adds an Android Bittray Maven repository. It updates the minimum SDK 19. And it adds a bunch of new dependencies. So now we can run npm test to verify everything that we've added actually works. So all our tests pass, and we even have an auth test, so that's nice. And then we can open the project in Xcode. And you need to do this because the library for iOS OIDC authentication from Okta is written in Swift. And so by default, React Native creates a non-Swift library. Um, and so you just have to add a Swift file, and then it makes it into a Swift compatible library so um, I tried to do this programmatically with the schematic and just creating a Swift file doesn't do it. it it modifies a bunch of other settings so I'm gonna call this polyfill and then you don't need to create a bridging header so you can just say don't create and then that's all you need to do you can also go into the projects settings and make sure that you have signing configured so signing and capabilities here and then you could you know, deploy it as a production app. So I'm going to cancel out of there. And now I should be able to do pod install. So go into the iOS directory and run pod install. And then from the top level directory, you can run react native run iOS. And you can see it adds a login button to the home screen in the application. We can click login. And it'll prompt you, and this is something that you can't really get away from because this is a feature of, or a safety feature of iOS. So it's going to tell you what website wants to sign in. It'll take you to that website, and then you can enter your credentials. And you come back, and you're logged in. So you can do a get user from ID token, or you can get user from request. And those are all using the React Native SDK and its methods to get that information and then you can log out as well this is another safety feature I haven't figured out a way around it but it'll prompt you again to log out so now we're logged out that's iOS one thing I forgot to mention is in the auth config file is all your settings for OIDC so you can see the schematic just puts them in there for you and so now we can also do Android so if we were to open up Android Studio you can run an AVD in an Android virtual device. Uh, you have to do that first or you have to plug in a phone. Otherwise, when you run React Native run Android, it won't actually do anything. So we can click here to create a new AVD, create virtual device, and maybe a Pixel 3 XL, and choose the latest operating system, and finish. And then you can start it. You can choose to update if it prompts you to update. And then when your AVD is up and running, you can run React Native, run Android. That can take a couple minutes to finish building and deploying, but once it's up, you'll see there's a login button you can click on. That'll open up Chrome. And then you can log in there as well. And just like with iOS, you can also get the user's information from the ID token. If you want to do a custom login screen with React Native, we do have an example for that. If you go to Okta Samples JS React Native in GitHub, this is where that's at. Or if you just go to our 
samples JS React Native, it shows not only what I showed with the browser sign in, but custom sign in as well. And if you were to read the blog post, there is actually a section that shows you how to do it the hard way. So instead of using schematics and having that install and update the files for you, you can do it the hard way. And I also wanted to let you know about a cool thing called Ignite J Hipster. So Ignite J Hipster is a React Native boilerplate for J Hipster app. So if you want to generate a backend with Node or .NET or Java, J Hipster supports that. And then you could create a React Native front end using Ignite J Hipster. And it's got an entity generator for CRUD, end-to-end um, -end tests, and much more. So that's a pretty cool thing. And you can watch a presentation on YouTube if you like about it. And so the GitHub repo is here, blog post is here, and uh, I thank you for watching this screencast and learning about React Native authentication. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to do. You can follow my team on Twitter at Octadev. You can follow me on Twitter at mrabel. And of course, friends don't let friends build authentication. And if you like this video, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we try to post videos every week. Thank you. Hope you have a great day.